Hey you guys, uh, I just wanted to jump on real quick and make a quick video for Antelope users looking to utilize uh, the speaker controller capabilities of either uh, a Galaxy 32, which I've got here, or a Galaxy 64, or now the Orion 32 Gen 4 will do this. Uh, but very basically, I was involved in the sort of conception of this idea um, of building a software solution for monitor control into the devices. and. You know, really, a couple of years ago, it started becoming clear that uh, these particularly wide surround formats like Dolby Atmos and Sony 360 were going to start becoming delivery requirements for a lot of mixers. Um, and it just seemed like the time was right to create a software solution in lieu of, you know, dropping five, six, ten grand sometimes on these hardware uh, speaker controllers. So we've built a thing that I think is a pretty solid setup. Uh, there's other videos, there's plenty of videos out there sort of uh, sort of shilling the thing. <laughs> but I keep finding myself in a scenario where I'm having nearly identical conversations with whether it's new users or, you know, maybe existing Antelope users who are just getting into the, the surround functionality. And it felt like it would be a good idea to take 10 minutes, 15 minutes or whatever and just run through the surround panel, but mainly uh, get into sort of strategies for utilizing the software presets and let's just talk it through for a minute. I think I think this can be helpful. So uh, let me switch over here. Okay. So this is my control panel. Is that gonna work? Let's do this. Okay, this is my control panel. And uh, you know, I've gone through and kind of labeled it up a little bit, which keeps things clearer for me. I'm obviously doing a uh, native setup. I'm, I've got my HD tabs hidden because I'm not using them. Uh, and this is my Atmos setup, which is pretty simple. You know, these things don't need to be complex. Uh, I've got my line inputs feeding my DAW inputs straight in. And then I've got my DAW outputs 1 through 16 here feeding surround inputs, my surround tab. And then the output of my surround tab is feeding so this is where it gets a little complicated I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna i'm not gonna dumb this down because this is potentially something you might want to do the output of my surround tab then feeds my 60 my first dozen afx lanes on the way to then afx out to my line outputs what this enables me to do i haven't done it yet but i've got i've got dolby coming by this week to do a dolby tune and my thinking is that what I will do is have them, you know, I, I set it up this way so that if they feel that they need more equalization on any given channel than what I've got available on the surround tab, then um, I've got a clear cue available on every on every channel as well. Left, right, center, LFE, right? And this could potentially be two clear cues. Um, I did a test the other day and I believe that each instance of this only, it was, it was incurring it was it was just a matter of a few samples, so it's it's pretty inconsequential. It's one of the greatest things about this antelope stuff, um, or one of the great things. So anyway, what I'm that, that's that's my plan. I haven't I haven't done the tune yet, but maybe after maybe after Brian comes and does the tune, maybe I'll make another video um, showing where we landed. But that's uh, that's my thinking. Uh, but you know. The routing tab, I'm going to assume you understand. It's like a digital patch bay. We're, we're taking, you know, items on the top row, and they, they feed items in the bottom row. So just like I went through, my line puts feed my, you know, blah, 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 blah. And it's you're always just dragging a bank of, maybe it's a whole row, maybe it's a, a couple of boxes, but you're dragging sort of, you're routing things by dragging, um, uh, dragging boxes from the top to the bottom. That's all it is, right? The surround panel, there's some videos out there explaining how this thing works. Um, at the moment, I've just got trims and delays banged in here. Uh, but the thing that I think that we should talk about in this video is mainly an approach to the software presets here. I hope you can see that, yeah. So in my room, I've got a few speaker scenarios. I've got a few scenarios, basically. So I have um, my... So the, this number one Wilson's, uh, that's my my uh, Atmos speaker array, and I've also got a pair of Oratones over here to my side, and then I've got a pair of uh, Tanoi speakers up in the front of the room, 
Uh, I've got a setting here to listen to stereo, and I use that for the binaural output of uh, the Dolby renderer. And then I've got a second setup, uh, an additional input here, which I don't want to get in the weeds on this, but I'm doing, I'm taking a re-render out of the Dolby renderer off to another, off to a little Mac Mini over here in my rack. It's running Logic. Uh, I'm mixing in Pro Tools, so it's running Logic. And uh, I'm able to run a run a, a 714 re-render out of the Dolby renderer through Logic, and it's creating what we've all deemed the spatial render. <laughs> but it's basically the stereo fold. It's not a stereo fold down. It's a binaural fold down, but it's different than the Dolby binaural. It's Apple's one. Uh, and again, without getting in the weeds, the Apple one, though, uh, at the moment anyway, I don't know if it's going to change, but it 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 uh, it ignores the the uh, near mid far binaural metadata, and just sort of applies the Apple sauce, <laughs> which in a way is kind of like everything's somewhere between near and mid, you know, but it's just, but it's a different render and it sounds a bit different. So it's important to be able to listen to it in real time and sort of react in your mix, <clears throat> make adjustments in your mix based upon all that. And, you know, as, as we all well know that sort of part of the kind of balancing act we're all, we're all uh, performing doing these Atmos mixes at the moment is trying to find a kind of middle ground where, you know, the speaker mix is compelling, the binaural render is compelling, and also the spatial render uh, or Apple's, you know, Apple's sauce uh, is also compelling. So it's it's sometimes finding a middle ground. But that aside, we're here to talk about software presets. And, you know, I've got a pretty basic strategy that I've, I've tried a few things. Um, and I've also helped a few friends now, quite a few friends, set up their rooms with this rig. And the thing that we've landed on that I think is really effective is something like this. So... What I do is I do get my setup together for sort of my most complex setup, okay? And, and in my case, that's my Atmos render. That's this setup we're looking at now. And I save it. There's two ways to save. I can save here in project sessions, or if I'm on the routing tab, there's also this little save button over here that's specific to the routing tab. So put a pin in that, <laughs> but for my sort of, I'm gonna do like an overall save that's gonna be my big save, okay? And I do that as a project session. So I'm going to hit save here. And I'm going to go ahead and leave all of the attributes. The cool thing about a project session is that you've got all these different attributes that you can select or deselect into that save, right? So the, the point I'm trying to make, though, is I like to have one save that is all the attributes of the control panel. And I save that. Uh, I've got a, I've got a folder here of all my Galaxy 32 setups. I save that as my, and I like to number them because it just that's how my brain works. But I save that as my, I call this zero main antelope setup all. Okay, and that's that's just my save of every single thing, every last thing. The way I've relabeled some of the boxes, every last thing is saved. Okay. Now, when I go to load that, it can take 20, 30 seconds sometimes to to load all of that data. So it isn't an effective way to switch back and forth between speakers, I wouldn't want to load the all save because it just takes too long. I want to be able to switch back and forth between both sources and speakers very, very quickly. So the all save, I just kind of keep in my back pocket. If every, if anything starts going haywire or just for my own sort of sense of well-being, I want to load that now and then and just know that I'm back to my, my, my happy null point. I've got that, right? But then for my switching, what I tend to do because most of our switching are just going to be routing saves, right? And the cool thing uh, in the routing tab, this 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 other kind of peculiar <laughs> save button, this kind of seemingly redundant save button over here, when I click it, it only saves routing data. So to be clear, it's no different than saving here if I went through and deselected everything, right, other than routing. It would be the same thing. But there's a nice shortcut where I can just hit save over here, and it's only a routing save. And the routing save for the switching that I'm doing, primarily that's what I want to do. Like, so, so let me show you what I've got going on. So this is my software preset A. Uh, 
And that one takes a minute. You saw it said loading for a second. And it, it maybe took two seconds, maybe maybe a second and a half there. And that's because it's loading uh, not only... It's got to load these AFX lanes. It's got to load my surround data. Uh, and it's got to load routing changes. But then all my other... My orotones, my tenoids, all these other outputs, they're simply routing changes. And these happen pretty quickly, though, right? And that's because there's there's less attributes saved in into them they're only routing changes and that makes them switch very quickly so for instance my orotones i'm just taking my surround outputs and those are feeding outputs 13 and 14 those feed my orotones super post the the surround sorry i'm pointing at my mrc here you can't see it but you know post my surround level okay same thing with my tenoids i can switch over the tenoids now I've just got surround outputs, left and right surround outputs feeding my splitter output. And the splitter output is what's feeding my, it's feeding a, 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 a D to A converter in front of an a amplifier that feeds my tenoids. I like small analog circuit paths, so I like to take a digital feed up to the front of the room. Sounds great. Uh, but that's what that is. My, my, I'm calling it CAN stereo, but that's the Dolby render. That's simply, uh, uh, what is it? Oh, it's left, left front and right front just feeding. Oh, this is my Dolby. This is a different. This is just a stereo headphone. But so that's just left and right front feeding outputs one and two, which feed a little headphone amplifier here. And you can see that's not going through the surround pane. That's just going straight to the line outs because I control the volume here on this little volume knob on my headphone amp. We don't need to get in the weeds about my particular setup. I'm I'm walking you through this just to show though that this is these are some scenarios that you might come across. The idea being, though, and the thing that I, I kind of want to sort of bang home here and, like, bang into your brain hole <laughs> is, is that, you know, this idea of an overall save as a project save here that is your whole session. I'm repeating myself. And that you just have in your back pocket, but then you utilize your software presets to sort of do the switching that you would do. Like, for a long time, I had a Coleman controller here. I had used to have a Martin, then I had a Martin Sound 7-in-1 controller. All these speaking controllers that we all have, maybe you've got a Grace, maybe you've had this or that. All these things are just sort of sources feeding destinations, right? And, and in, in a stereo world, that's really simple. You've got a stereo source. It could be a could be your console, or it could be a DAT machine, it could be a CD player, it could be the output of Pro Tools, whatever it is, those are your sources feeding stereo destinations, which would maybe be a couple of two, three sets of speakers. This is a sort of graduated version of that, but it's the same idea. But the idea with the software presets is that, you know, in creating this, the idea was rather than having a sort of infrastructure of sources feeding destinations, and it all starts getting pretty complicated pretty quick. And, and the thinking was that we could just create these, the, an ability to save a software preset that could be anything. It could be anything in the world. In my case, I'm using the software presets as mostly speaker switching, but they could also be source switching to one pair of speakers. It could be anything. You're just these these presets you should think of as sort of snapshots of your control panel and snapshots you're taking of whatever attributes of the control panel that you select in the save session dialog, right? So it's super super sort of open ended. Um, there's no limit to what you could set up with your room again the examples i'm going through here are simply what i've set up but you may have a whole other thing going but this is the thinking and i think that it's you know probably a very very solid strategy though is to sort of only save one time your overall setup as your global thing and then use your software presets for whatever source switching or speaker switching that you need to do uh saving them with only the necessary attributes selected if not even just simply a routing save, right? So that they switch quickly. I guess we could leave this at that. Uh, oh, one last thing to mention. You know, we've got software presets A through E, okay? So we've got essentially five possibilities f for a save, but that doesn't mean you can only have five saves. It only means that you can have five of your presets available at any given time, sort of at, at arm's length or sort of on on buttons on your MRC. I've got uh, let me see. I actually cleared this out recently. I've had as many as seven or eight, sometimes ten 
presets that I've saved for various scenarios. And then what I approach, how I approach the five locations to store, keep those presets is I just, depending on what I'm doing that day, I don't usually need more than five possibilities. Like if I'm doing an Atmos mix today, I will have my Atmos array. I'll have my spatial render, my binaural render. You know, I'll have a, the three listening scenarios I need for that day and I'll put those on the buttons for today and I'll work that way. If I'm doing a stereo mix, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd have my Tannoys, my Wilsons, my stereo headphones. I'd have different possibilities for that day. And that's just how, that that's just, I guess that's just logical is the truth. But, you know, you can certainly have more, all this to say, you can certainly have more than five presets. You just have five buttons with which to park those presets at any given time. So, um, I don't know. I hope that's helpful. Until next time. Bye.